Hello and welcome to this week's angling blog. This week you join me on the banks of Village Pool and we're in search of silvers on the whip. So as you can see behind me, you do join me on a damp overcast Sunday morning. For those that watch the channel regular, you've guessed it, have definitely forgot me brolly, so we are going to get a bit damp today, but hey, it's fishing and we can't complain. So those that are new to the channel, my name's Danny and every Friday at 6 o'clock we put a video on the channel, whether that's pike, dace, carp, all manner of fishing. So if you are new around here, hit the subscribe button, ring the little bell and you won't miss any of the videos on the channel. So before we get into the vlog, I just want to cover a recent capture that I did have, one that I will never forget. Um, I took a rare day off work last week, decided to pick up, you know, two pints of maggots, a bit of hemp and head to the River Dane. I only had a couple of hours, so I thought, do you know what? Let's go and try a completely different stretch and search out some new water. There was nothing to lose. After a couple of casts, I caught one or two chublets. The float buried and struck into a solid fish. At first, I thought I'd hit a snag and then the snag began moving upstream. Fishing four pound line and a two pound hook link was definitely not in control of the battle as the fish headed upstream easily on its way. At any moment, I thought the line was going to snap. I just thought, you know, when you get to the point where you put as much pressure as you can put on the fish and it's still going, you're just expecting that line to snap. What made that fish turn around, I have no idea to this day, but the fish slowly started moving into my pool and then began moving downstream. What then happened was a battle of attrition, really. The fish taking line, me gaining line, got it up in the water, I had my small phase one net with me because I was fishing for silvers and putting the net under a 10 pound barbel from the River Dane on such light gear is a moment that I'll never forget. As you can see on screen now, a beautiful fish and one that will live with me forever. It's one that I don't think I'll ever beat for both excitement and, you know, a double figure barbel from the River Dane is one of those fish of a lifetime, isn't it? So yeah, that is something that I wanted to share with the channel. The capture does come with a tinge of sadness, really. A capture that means so much to me and I've got all the footage of on video, can't be shared, really. A fish of that size, you know, would be a target fish and people would target that area and keep going at it and keep going at it and it would get caught and it'd get caught time and time again. And anyone that fishes the River Day knows that barbel are rare and that fish is most definitely a breeding fish. So we need to look after it. So I do hope you understand why the video has not been shared. I'm absolutely buzzing about its capture, as you can probably tell. And yeah, I guess some things are best left as a memory. Or who knows, one day the barbel stocks on the river might recover where it's back to where the £10 barbel was not uncommon and the video can be shared. Back to the fishing today. And it's a drab, wet day, as you can see behind me. We're going to be fishing the whip for silvers and it's just a relaxed day's fishing. I thought, you know what, grab some maggots, grab some hemp, some tares, the whip and let's see what we can catch. So the box is all set up behind me, as you can see. Let's get down there and make a start. So looking at the swim, we've got round about a pint and a half of Cheshire particle hemp. The same with red maggot. Looking at the swim. That is the swim that you've seen on the channel before, on the sandbank. And sometimes a change is as good as a rest. You can see here how flooded the pool is. There's another staging below that. So the, the level is still up, but it has dropped a bit. And it'll be exciting to see what we catch. I'm pretty sure Mr. Carp's going to be active still, but hopefully we can pick up some nice roach. Let's get the GoPro on the heads and make a start. So on the first cast of the day, just flick it out. The setup that we're using is my five meter Dinsmore whip. I've got that down to a four by 12 float and a strung out set of numbered eight weights. And that's down to a size 18 hook. Now the swim here is quite shallow going out and then it does drop off the edge of the shelf. So I'm just gonna start off on top of the shelf and see how we do. Got a good window with 
the light on the peg you've got the dark water on either side and you've got the light so got a good area to aim at just started by feeding hemp and a maggot on the hook really I'm not going to go too mad with the feeding because we are you know a bit later on in the year now it's not as warm as it was a month ago when we were last on here so feeding wise I am just going to feed a few maggots and a pinch of hemp just each cast just trying to attract some fish into the area not going to go too mad because although you know past sessions on here have been prolific and there's been lots of bites you never really know how it's going to fish it's the first nearly hit myself in the face <laughs> fish of the session just a little small roach and at this time of year it can take a while you know for the fish to find the bait you can see there's a lot of fish moving so it's just a case of being patient keeping on trickling that bait in and hoping that you know the shoal of fish does arrive in your area you can see there's one or two about and they are you know in the area but it's just about being patient and attracting them fish into your area and waiting and hopefully when they do arrive it'll be you know, a bit more structured than normal and that's a, a decent quality one most definitely the stand that we're looking for there we go there's that fish nice roach on an autumn day let's get him straight back oh, just another one of those nice roach it's the feeding habits of the roach that I'm interested in because obviously if I want to target them again just on hemp and tears the fact that they're feeding in them lower layers now means that you've got a chance of keeping them down there when they're up in the water you know on the top and swirling at your bait very hard to catch at times when they're like this and they're coming as the float's settling much better and that's a lovely roach that we'll take a look at him is a lovely fish coming as the float settled on the bottom and that's what I mean by the feeding habits how they're different from before there's a lot of fish topping on the pool but in the past they would have been swirling at the maggots by now whereas they do seem a lot more structured let's get it straight back and for anyone that's watched the channel and seen the video where we were fishing for carp in France there was some cold cold nights there and when we were waking up to them frosty mornings you know we were carp fishing but my mind was thinking about back home fishing for roach and then first frosts that are going to come soon fishing for dace and chub and what a lovely backdrop you've got the trees with all the colours in the whip bent into a roach and this is a a nice quality one most definitely and we caught some lovely carp in France when we were there fish of huge proportions but for me I think you guys who watch the channel regularly know that is where it's at for me that's a lovely roach that Let's get it straight back. And autumn is a beautiful time to be on the pool and a beautiful time to be bankside. It's one of my favourites along with winter. But autumn just has that mix of colours, doesn't it? You've got all the yellows, the greens. And if you look on this side, all the oranges and the browns. It really is one of my favourite times to be bankside. You get all the reflections and... I mean, if you look at that tree there, just look at the difference in colour. Change is most definitely happening. You can see the leaves on the pool. And it won't be long before all the leaves have gone. And we're into proper winter. And I think that's when this pool will come into its own. 
when it's really cold. I'm excited to see what it has to offer on an ice cold day. It's got potential most definitely. And there we go, there's that bream, more than welcome. And a great fight on that whip, a lovely fish. Let's get him straight back. I think we've definitely got one or two of these bream muscled in on the party most definitely <laughs> they are grateful on the whip you say it's the second one that we've hit in what 10 minutes and there we go the second bream in quick succession and i imagine with the real change that's coming in on here in 2022 where you can use ground bait We'll have some really good sessions targeting these fish. Right now though, go back and tell your mates to let the roach back in on the party please. Let's get him straight back. It has been, you know, great fun this morning. The bites coming steady now. I'm putting a few fish in the net and with them two bream we've had you know a few pound of fish already and no sooner had I said that the floats buried and we've hooked into a much better fish like I said before the levels are up there is actually a peg below us I'm just standing up to try and keep the line off it and it is a small carp <laughs> and I guess that barbel in the week just showed what two pound line can do and now we're on a whip attached to a carp so we've only the one GoPro battery with me today just moved over to the phone and the only saving grace here really joking aside is that it's a small carp I think that's the only thing that's helping us here I think if it was a, a big one, it'd be game over. So there we go, what a lovely carp that is. Only a small one, thank God. But on a five metre whip, boy, what a battle. And great fun. I just hope that his brother and sister are not down there. It has gone eerily quiet, like I said. And yeah, I think if his brother and sister turn up, it's going to be session over and home for tea and biscuits. So oh, again, it's gone quiet, and this time we've definitely hit a slightly bigger carp, most definitely. And a solid bend in the whip, and you can just tell straight away because it goes quiet. The bites go iffy, so it doesn't look the biggest again, but it is a carp. It's just a bit of luck that we haven't hit one of the big ones, really, and they are great fun on light gear. I guess it just shows what fun you can have on a whip. About the limit really of what you can expect to get in on a whip. Good fun. Let's get him straight back. So very next cast after putting that small cart back. We've hit another big fish and I'd be surprised if it's not another carp. It could mark the end of the session really unless we try and make another swim to the right, but yeah, as you can see, solid bend in the pole. 
and it's not really doing much. There are some big bream in here, so you never really do know. But I'd be amazed if it's not a carp. And it is a common theme on here. There's some lovely roach and silvers in here. And maybe it's a venue that we should come on the Waggler. And when the rivers are flooded in winter and it's really cold, it has got huge potential for the silvers. So leave a comment down below if that's something that you'd you know, like to see on the channel, a Waggler video on here in winter. Because it has got huge potential with the silvers that are in here. And hopefully, after those first frosts, Mr. Cart will have calmed down a bit. There we go. What a battle on the whip that was. And I guess it just shows how solid that connection is at the end of the pole. You know, people do ask, is it strong enough to get fish in? Well, I guess this shows, doesn't it? You know, when you're dealing with roach and bream, if you can get a carp in on it, it's strong enough. So we'll take a quick look at that after this fish. The way the session's going, uh, two carp in quick succession isn't good for the roach fishing is it so we'll get back at it see if we can get one or two more and get this fish straight back a quick look on how you attach the elastic to the pole and uh, many don't understand how it doesn't come off because there's no knot but like you've seen there with that carp it doesn't what you do on your main line you slide on quite a long sleeve because that's going to cover the tip like that to prevent tangles and then behind it you put on a smaller one that's the first one that goes over the end of the whip with the line through it. You can see there the lines through it. Then you wrap the line around the tip, you know, 10, 15 times back towards the end. And then you push the other rubber over the end of the whip. And like you've seen there, it'll go nowhere. If it can land carp, then it can land roach and bream. Super strong, super reliable. Don't need any elastic or anything like that and it'll do you just fine so for the next hour i decided to fish a bit shallower feeding maggot a bit more than the hemp and as you can see on screen managed to pick up a few more roach which did keep the swim ticking over nicely but you could see the telltale signs of the carp about the swim would die and the bubbles would reappear but we were getting bites last 10 minutes i've hit another carp fishing shallow so my thinking is the best thing to do is to call it a day i don't see the point in fishing a swim where you know you're going to hit another carp and eventually you're just going to get snapped or you're going to snap your whip it just seems pointless to me on the pool as you can see behind me looks beautiful and the net's drying behind me and as you can see on screen now we've had quite a good morning's fishing plenty of bites and we did have them two bream and we've managed to get them two carp as well so loads of fun on the bank and an enjoyable sunday morning looking back at the venue it is a venue that we get as anglers that get underneath your skin you know the potential of the place you know you know this quality roach about and when we do work it out and we come on here and have a day's fishing for roach where we really do get it right we'll look back on these other sessions as learning bits of the jigsaw won't we and that is what fishing is all about. It's about the journey, getting to that end goal. And with this place, it most definitely is getting a nice net of roach. On that note, I want to wish you all tight lines in your own fishing. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll catch you all next week. Tight lines.